So thank you everybody for thank you all for coming. I'm David Schloss, also known as I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's been really uh, vital to me because I grew up in this village and I've lived in Niagara on and off all of my life, which is that the success of the entire village as a whole depends on the entities in the village working together. And I've seen throughout the history of the village that that has sort of ended and flowed in terms of how well the village works together uh, as a whole. Before we start talking, I want to just talk about two experiences that I had within the last like, 12 hours. One was a conversation that I had on Facebook uh, with somebody who did not like a particular type of business being in NIAC, and it led to a whole thing about NIAC as a viable opportunity, whether or not the village should legislate what kind of businesses should or should not be allowed to be in, in, in the village. And of course, we live in a, a free market economy where the whole idea is that the market decides what should or should be. Doing. That brings me to the second point, and the second point had to do with the comment made at the end of that. Uh, today, which was about the Palisade Center Mall. So before we start talking about NIAC, I just want everybody to think for a second about the Palisade Center Mall. And think about the last time you might have seen an advertisement specifically just for the mall, not for a business in the mall, but for the mall itself. Other than when it first opened, I can't think of a single piece of advertising that I've ever seen that says Palisade Center. Uh, first of all, I don't think they know which of the various P's all over the buildings when there is their official logo but I've never seen anything that advertises the mall. And the reason why nothing advertises the mall is because they don't have it. It's because the brands that are inside the mall spend almost all of their time and effort advertising themselves. And so when somebody comes to go to the Gap, they're also going to go to Old Navy, and they're going to go to the Apple Store, and they're going to go to Stir Crazy, and they're going to go on the Carousel. And so when people go, they're shopping at individual brands. But it's those individual brands that have made that behemoth of the mall actually successful. And at the same time, it's that behemoth of a mall that has made downtown less successful. And that's been the story all across America. We have large malls and we have large, um, we have large experiences that have sort of changed the dynamic of what happens in the village. So I want to talk a little bit about collaborative social media. We're going to talk about this as I'm a uh, This American Life fan in five acts. The first is why collaborate. The second is why social media. The third one is, who are the players? A focus on Facebook, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then how to collaborate. And for the how to collaborate part, there's most of the big conversation between all of us. Uh, so when we think about why would I want to help my competition, which is essentially what we're going to talk to today. How do I make my business better by helping everybody else? Uh, one of the things that I want, to, I want to just have you think about is this. This is why I want to help the competition, because I think that this is the most iconic sign in the village about, about where we are at today. So let's talk a little bit about the village of Nyack. Uh, where are we right now? Uh, sorry, let's talk. I can't even go back about the village of Nyack a little bit. So you can map the village of Nyack. It is just about 1.6 square miles. However, I get to find it. Here. You'll see that the majority of the residents are actually deceased in the cemetery or about to be deceased over here in the hospital. Wow. I was treated by the area twice in the last month, so I get to make that joke. Um, so we have a village that's 1.6 square miles. And there are, as of the accuracy of Wikipedia in 2012, about 6,800 people who live officially within the village of Niagara. That doesn't count South Niagara, Upper Niagara. However, when you think about it, there's 311,000 people in Rockland County. And if we go across the river, there's 949,000 people who live in Westchester. So we're getting two things from this. Nyack is an incredibly, incredibly small place. I talk a lot, uh, I was the president of the Rockland Bicycling Club for eight years, and I used to talk about the fact that in order to go anywhere to lead a ride in Rockland County, I had to start by going to Bergen County. Because to my right was the river, to my north was climbing, to my west was landfill and the mall and it was 59. So basically everything started going off south. So Nyack is an incredibly, incredibly small place. I know probably 60% of everybody in this room, and I've known the majority of you from before you came into my shop. Um, however, Nyack is situated 
directly inside a gigantic market. And so we've got two different reasons of why people shouldn't help out other businesses in mind. One of those is, well, it's such a small market that my customers uh, can't go anywhere else, which we'll talk about. But I think that that one is a fallacy because my customers are everybody's customers. Right before I ate here, I was over at our cafe having a cappuccino and hummus. I ran into one of our regular customers who explained to me the reason why he was eating at our cafe. As if I could expect that he would come and have nothing but coffee at my store several times a day. Now, I, I am lucky enough that when I want coffee, I don't have to walk very far. I'm usually the guy making it. But when I go to eat, I ate this morning uh, at home, but I went with my social playground. We went to the Fountain Arts for lunch. We went to our cafe for dinner. So there's no such thing as competition. Um, somebody who eats at one restaurant isn't going to eat only exclusively at that restaurant. Someone who shops at one clothing store isn't going to shop exclusively at that clothing store. Somebody who goes to um, a bar and gets drunk and throws up outside the, the houses here is probably going to do that at another bar. There's really no such thing as competition. Let's talk a little bit about overlapping friends. So here's my Facebook page right now. Uh, I have 589 friends. Now I spent a lot of time in media, I spent 20 years doing technology and photography writing and teaching. I would say I've got 250 of those friends lived in or around my app, and probably the rest of them are middle of the country or the West Coast, just somewhere else in the world. So here's an interesting thing about it. 589 friends, let's say ballpark 250 of them live somewhere around my app. So let's take a look at Luminesque, and I think this is a perfect example of why not to worry about competition. There's a coffee shop on the way to my coffee shop. And when they started to build Luminesque, people said to me, are you upset that they're putting a coffee shop on the corner? And I said, no. And he said, I said, why? And I said, because right before it was a coffee shop, it was an empty building. And so I would much rather have the vibrancy of a corner with multiple coffee shops drawing people down the street. And there's a thing that they talk about uh, called the swerve. And that is, a, if you listen to Radio Lab, they talked about this on an episode recently. It's the tendency of people to walk down the street, and then they suddenly catch their eye, and they sort of swerve towards that thing. And so I would rather have something that makes people swerve towards my street than have absolutely nothing on the corner. I would rather have competition directly next door to me than have nothing there. It's better for me. Now, if you look at this, though, how many friends of mine like this, three friends of mine like events. Now, they have not they've been as active in social media as Gypsy has. We've got about 1,700 fans right now. In terms of the village, it's pretty good. But in terms of Gypsy, social media, it's not that huge. But only three of my friends are their friends. Our cafe, which was the, you know, I get cited all the time, like, oh my god, you still go to our cafe? And yeah, I still go to our cafe. So 57 friends are connected, 53 of my friends like them. I get 250 people, and of that, 57 of my friends like our cafe as well. So the Bossy Frog Band, that's got 609 friends, and only 14 of my friends, my friends, like the Facebook page for Balsy Frog. I can count more than 14 people in this room who I consider friends who like Balsy Frog. So there's clearly something that's not going on properly here in social media because the people who like my page and who are my friends should also like the Balsy Frog page. They should also like Cafe Barcel. They should also like Evolution Optique. And this is the one that I find the most surprising. Evolution Optique contains two people who are original partners in the starting of my business. And although that company only 31 of my friends like both my, uh, my site and I lose my team. That just seems incredibly strange to me. So clearly Nayak is doing something either wrong or not exactly right when it comes to social media. Hey, can you explain why likes are important? Why likes are important? I will. I will. Um, so I will when I get to focus on Facebook, but very quickly. The way social media works is that the more people are connected to something, the more likely you are to see that as your friends check in or, or participate in. And we'll talk about this when we get to the Facebook section more extensively. But by having somebody liking something, what you're saying is that that will then be more likely to be seen on my friends, uh, my friends' Facebook pages as well. And remind me if I don't touch on more Facebook, please David, to go back and talk about that. So let's talk about some great reasons to uh, to work online. There's a website address at the bottom that this was originally from social media today. Um, what we have over here is a social proof, which means that it lets people know that you're there. They don't have to call you to find out if you have a business that you online and see if you post it today, it's pretty likely that you're open and that you're there. Um, it provides a uh, familiarity, it humanizes your brand. 
which means that when you talk about something in social media and people are going to look at it, they feel more connected to it. And later we'll talk about how to take advantage of that. It helps you build your sphere of influence, which is what Dave was asking about, and we'll get back to it, is how many people you can reach to the tangential friends of your friends, which is hugely important. The next thing we're going to talk about is that your competition uses social media. If you're not doing really good social media, the person down the street from you is. Uh, your target audience is using it. How many people here checked in and looked at Facebook at some point today? Raise your hands. Actually, it'd be better to put your hands up. How many people did not look at Facebook today? Okay. You're going to do it when you get home? <laughs> okay. So, of a room of roughly, what do we say, 50, 60 people here, one person is not checking. So, if we doubled that, we would have uh, you know, two people out of 100 that does not look at Facebook at some point. Google counts your social sharing when it does page ranks. And so, for example, if you are searching for coffee shops in Niagara and your social media is more active, Google will rank that higher than a coffee shop that might be more successful, busier, and better than that. It's the next generation of word of mouth marketing. Uh, the statistics about how much money there are in uh, per capture and per customer, uh, customer acquisition, we'll talk about in a little bit. But word of mouth is by far the best kind of advertising. Because when a friend recommends something to somebody in person, they're much more likely, they're significantly more likely to try to click on it. Uh, it provides transparency and exposure, but this is one of the reasons that some businesses do not like social media. It's because when you do something really great, everybody knows about it, and when you do something really lousy, well, everybody knows about it. However, we'll talk about uh, how to turn that into a really uh, beneficial thing along the way. It opens up a conversation. So if there's something that your customers are thinking or want to know or want you to do, when they talk to you about it on social media, you're going to get that feedback from them, which means that your social media sites are doing market research for you at the same time. And that is really important. Uh, and it's great for customer service if you do it correctly. And we'll talk about how to do it correctly. If you don't pay attention, it is terrible. And here's a little bit of uh, a word of caution. 95% of all Facebook posts are not answered by brands, and by brands and businesses or organizations. 95% of comments are not answered, which was uh, not a statistic I just made up to try and impress you, actually. That is a very fast statistic. Part of that is Facebook's user interface. It is not really fantastic for letting you see what's going on on your business pages, but part of that is just that people are really too busy to pay attention. You have to pay attention. Um, as an example, right after I posted that we were doing a social media talk, I had a uh, customer, I guess I could call him a customer, that uh, said that it's ironic that he's been put off from Gypsy Donut because he posted right after we were open and I hadn't replied yet. So I went back to take a look to try and figure out where this, this miss had happened with my customer. And it was one day when we were doing staff training about a week before we opened, we went to a customer uh, an employee dinner over at Frank Peppy's. And he wrote, which friend of Pepe's did you go to? And I didn't reply. Now, he actually remembers it as he asked if we had opened for business yet. But interesting, that was the next customer down who I also didn't reply to because that was the week we were open and I was doing nothing to get ready for it. So uh, it is now almost one year to the day from when we opened. We opened, soft open a week, a, week, a week from now, a year ago. I still have a customer who feels scorned enough that I didn't pay attention to him, that while talking about how uh, we were talking about social media, they mentioned that I had sort of, so John, for promote if you're here, I love you more than anything. <laughs> so back to social media, this is what social media used to be. Uh, we have LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, Reddit, Skype, and Tumblr. Uh, these are some of the things that we're going to talk about, who the players are. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Facebook. Uh, Facebook stats, there are 1.3 trillion people on Facebook right now. Like every time I went to go look for a statistic, it was a significantly higher number for, for people on Facebook. Uh, even your mom is on Facebook. Even if your mom just has away, she's probably on Facebook. There are actually 1.6 uh, billion people on Facebook. There are more than 50 million pages, and that was as of March, so I'm not sure what the data is right now. Here are the pros about Facebook. Uh, you think food is access, access and reach. Your mom is on Facebook. Uh, it's easy to connect Facebook to other posting services and blogs. Sometimes we use Facebook as our way to connect to other things. Sometimes we use Facebook as the way other things are connecting to things. And so it's easy to connect it to things. The cons, the interface, and the sheer amount of data makes it hard to see things. 
that comment that I missed from somebody a year ago made somebody a non-loyal customer for life. Uh, cons, your mom is on Facebook. So um, the second point of those cons is actually probably the most important takeaway, which is that Facebook purposefully hides information and obfuscates important stuff for you in order to generate revenue. Because up until you get to a certain point of audience share, you can't promote things. You can't promote things, which is a way of spending advertising dollars to get things in your friend's stream. No matter what you're writing, it's not getting in your friend's streams unless they have taken specific steps to make sure that they see every single one of your posts. So you have two choices. Have, make sure that every one of your customers has set it up so that every time you write anything, brilliant or name, they see it in their stream. Or pay to promote your things, and that's done on purpose by Facebook. That does, however, make it a really brilliant marketing tool for companies and for businesses and organizations that use it well. Because if you know how Facebook works and you know how to get at least in front of people, your same amount of effort can be significantly more useful. So next we're going to take a look at Twitter. Uh, I had another person tell me, and she's probably here, that she reached out to me on Twitter a while ago. Uh, there are 500 million people on Twitter, 200 million active people. Majority of them are overthrowing the regime at any one point or another. Uh, the pro is the most powerful users can spread a message incredibly quickly. Because somebody tweets something and suddenly, quite literally, the government is overthrown as a result of that. I mean, it, it happens that fast. The difficulty about that is that uh, the average user's posts are just lost in the stream of data. So if I have a number of followers and those followers are following George Takai, the chances are that they're busy looking at some funny video with dogs and children and they're not saving my information about my specials. doesn't mean that you shouldn't post your information to Twitter. It just means that if you're focusing your social media attention, depending on what kind of business you have, is not necessarily the best chance. Next one I want to talk about is Instagram. Instagram is now part of Facebook, so it's a little bit odd to talk about them separately. However, there's 100 million users on Instagram right now and there's 5 billion photos on Instagram. As of March. Uh, the pros is that people who use Instagram are incredibly prolific and incredibly loyal to the platform. People who are on Instagram are Instagramming all day long. They are having the conversations that they used to have on Twitter with the people up until Twitter just became full of advertising. At some point that will likely happen in Instagram as well, but right now people are able to get a cadre of small people with similar interests and just share information, share pictures with them. Unlike Twitter, the characters that you're sharing are not limited when you're talking to people. And uh, you don't have to you don't have to specifically link to a photo for someone to see the photo. Uh, I read a statistic the other day that uh, this was part of Facebook's recent change to the newsfeed, which is that uh, if a post had a photo with it, it was 95 percent more likely to be right. And so that is a statistic that leads directly into the Instagram information, which is that uh, people want to take pictures, they want to share information visually. The cons, it's not really always known, easy to know where to search. Uh, if I want to follow all their donut shops, I have to hope that they're using the right hashtag in order to try and find them. I have to hope that they've got the word donut in their name. Somebody is a donut shop and they've called themselves like Jolly Roll or something and they don't do hashtag donut, the chances are I can't follow them to see what they're doing. Likewise, if I don't put the hashtag saying Nyack in my pictures and someone's just looking to see pictures around Nyack, no one's going to find me. However, if I do put the hashtag Nyack, in my information, then they might see a picture of me, a picture of Lisa Memorial Park, a picture of the clouds. It's very difficult to differentiate. So we use, I'll talk about this, we use Instagram extensively, but we use it as a way to push information to the other platforms. Uh, next up is Flickr. I'm going to talk about Flickr briefly. <coughs> Flickr is part of Yahoo, and uh, everyone just think about how often you use Yahoo in order to search for things for that. Flickr uh, gives you an incredibly easy way to store photos and information. Gives you incredibly easy ways to share those with other people on Flickr. The con is that when Flickr was acquired by Yahoo, they essentially stopped innovating. And then they were surpassed largely by things like Instagram and, and Facebook. Uh, another player is Google Plus. And to show the loyalty of Google Plus users, Al Firstberg is sitting in the middle of the room and he drove some great distance of time to come here and stream this to Google Plus. And so this shows that uh, of the 340 million users, and it's higher than that, that was just the March data, um, that Google Plus brought with it some really killer ways for people to make circles of people with related interests. Uh, for businesses that are especially tech related or photo related, this is terrific. Uh, those are two really great communities on Google Plus. 
It brought with it the idea that some of your friends might be into cycling, but some of your friends might be into coffee, but some of your friends might be into finding great places to take your kids. The guys you're looking for information on places to take your kids might not be into cycling friends, and so you don't have to share your information with all those people. And that's something that Facebook is trying to radically integrate into its changes and stuff. The cons is that the early attempts to dethrone Facebook fizzled. Um, I wouldn't say that it was not a successful thing. I think it's a really bad community. But I think Google pretty much stated that they thought that they had a Facebook killer on their hands. And Facebook has just such a sheer body that they kept going. Um, my other con is that it's really hard to write Google Pluses when you're writing them out, social media. And since a lot of social media ends up being in print media, having something that's really hard to write is really uh, a con. LinkedIn has 200 million unemployed people using it. If anyone has ever used LinkedIn, it's probably right after you were fired. Uh, the pros is that it has been used successfully by people in the search for new jobs. The cons that it's seen by many is they, hey, I just got laid off social network. Uh, I have actually never followed through. I have probably five fans on LinkedIn right now. Um, a lot of my professional contacts are there, but as a small business owner, it is not terribly useful. Uh, Pinterest, we'll talk about. So here's an interesting stat. Two, uh, 25 million users. And it's been uh, talked about as the only really female centric social media. Now, if you haven't seen Pinterest, the idea is essentially that a lot of your own pages are things that you like uh, food, uh, food, music, whatever, that you can pin it to your page. And your friends will see it as if you just clip pictures out of the magazine and come uh, I find that interesting. So, as many as not, this is a weird statistic. As many as 97%. Of Pinterest Facebook fans are female. So what they're trying to say here is that the people who like Pinterest to them like Pinterest on Facebook. Mostly they're female. So I don't know how many are mostly female, but uh, it, it's definitely a market that companies that are into products that are sold to women are uh, exploring. Better. So the pros is that you have easy sharing of mostly uh, goods. It's harder to share a service on Pinterest than it is something with a good photograph on it. Uh, it works best with things like clothing, food, and jewelry, things like that. The cons are that I find it's really depressing that the site that is primarily being promoted to women is about shopping. And so I feel that there's going to be at some point a negative backlash about the site as well, it's largely a place where you can find really pretty clothes and really nice jewelry. However, a lot of sites make a lot of money selling really pretty clothes and really nice jewelry. Uh, finally, we have Yelp and Foursquare. For the user statistics, it does not matter how many people on Yelp and Foursquare. All that matters is that those people are near your business. So if you're an organization, if you're a fundraising organization, Yelp and Foursquare are not terribly important. Uh, if somebody says you know, that they went to the playground, they get to the playground and they get a group for that. If you are something like me, a coffee shop, uh, Yelp and Foursquare can be whether or not somebody comes to your shop or not. So the pros about this is that it's the only social network that really allows the brand, so the business, to do things for the customer that they can instantly use. And so somebody who's on Yelp and Foursquare can integrate with my point of sale, and I can give them coupons, and I can give them discounts, and gift cards, and promotions. Uh, Facebook is working on doing that, but they don't have a direct online payment system right now. So you have to like, print out the thing and bring it to the merchant. It's not as great as someone doing it as well. Here is the biggest con. It's the only connection that you have with your customers. It's both the pro and the con. For many people, this is the only chance you get to hit your customer base. Uh, it's largely got negative reviews, and that's because of the law of averages. Most people who go to review something are angry about the experience. There are many fewer people who go and put a five-star review than who go to get a two-star review. Which means that as you start a business, you have a very high review. And when somebody came in and they felt that your, your staff didn't treat them well, they give you a one star review. Yelp then gives you a call and says, hey, we see that you have a whole bunch of really negative reviews. And you know, if you have Yelp for business, then you guys can go in and you can directly talk to those customers and maybe you can give them an offer and maybe they would change their rating of your thing. And like, if you feel that any of these are like really just not true, we'll take it off for you. And it always feels to me sort of like, it would really be a shame if your beautiful coffee shop burned down to the ground. Uh, as a result, we limit our exposure on Yelp and Foursquare. However, they're incredibly important to a lot of businesses. Okay. Of all those social medias, I'm going to talk about Facebook a lot. I'm going to talk about it because of all the networks that people participate in, it is the most, uh, is the most widespread and it's the most dynamic. 
And also, it connects easily with the other social networks, and so you can use it as you start. So, some stats on Facebook right now. Uh, an average user has 130 friends. 23% of users check in five times or more every single day. Uh, as of 2012, 17 billion location tag posts were posted on Facebook, which is interesting because only 3% of Americans have ever checked in sometimes. So that's a lot of check-ins for the people who are checking in. I think Foster has probably checked in a gym to go at 16,000 times since we opened. 80% uh, of social media users prefer to connect with brands through Facebook. That is, prefer to connect with brands through Facebook than their print advertising than their, their own website. And that's because it's easier to look up uh, Banana Republic while you happen to be on Facebook and chat with your friends than just jump off and try and look for their website. Social network and blogs account for 23 percent of all time spent online, which is twice as much as all time spent on online gaming. Now, if anybody has kids, and knows how much time is spent on online gaming. That's an incredible statistic. Facebook is a leading source of referred social media traffic. Referred social media traffic means from some site to your website or to your brand. So Twitter, and this is why we don't work with Twitter as extensively. Twitter dramatically overperformed. It's got five percent. So if you're spending the same amount of time replying to Twitter as to Facebook, you're doing, uh, you're getting one quarter of the eyeballs of the same amount of time. Twenty percent of all page views on the web are on Facebook. Twenty percent of all page views. That accounts for porn. And of porn, twenty percent of page views are still Facebook. Fifty-seven percent of all users are female. This is incredibly important for businesses. Because every statistic that uh, the federal government comes out with shows that women have now not only had the, the greatest number of advanced degrees in the country and across the world, they have the greatest number of degrees in the United States. They are by far more likely to be the lead spender in the household and the control of the money in the household and most likely to be the brand influencers. In other words, the person who is more likely to be loading the kids in the family car is the one who's going to drive that car to the place that they want to go. And I think there's probably no better example about the Barbara who comes into, sorry, right? that's, that's probably up and down, right? Uh, comes into our store at least one time a day, we have a button on our cash register called the Barbara because she gets a special drink, she comes and she gets that, so we dedicated an entire part of our cash sale to her. <laughs> 47% of people said that Facebook had the greatest impact on their purchase of behavior on any social media. That's huge. Companies are spending millions and millions of dollars on their websites. And the guy who that they're hiring out of college to sit and be on Facebook all day is doing more brand influence than the money that's spent. Now, that's partially because those people are then likely to jump off to the company's websites. But it's still more people are starting to so let's talk a little bit about the critical mass. And this is get back to David's points about likes and why likes are so important. We opened up a second location inside Piermont Bicycle Connection last September. When I did that, I took over the social media at Piermont Bicycle Connection as well. When I started, they had 158 likes. They had been on Facebook since Facebook started. They had only 158 people like. I know a couple of things about Facebook. There's a certain level at which in Facebook that you cannot promote individual posts. You have to do sidebar advertising. I know about how much money it takes to spend to get to that point. And so I went to Glenn and I said, give me a budget of X. We are going to increase your post to get to a certain level, take off your spending, and then promote individual posts. So this line here indicates where Piermont Bicycle Connection had been before I started doing social media. I didn't take it over until this spring. This is uh, where they were before. And then I started doing the advertising. This is a period that goes from the 7th to the 14th of a month. This is one campaign, 1,269 total likes of campaign, 737,000 people saw it. That could be 16,415 people total reach. It's a little bit of a deceptive statistic because that means that because of the fact that stuff is being pushed from one page to another page to another page, there was the likelihood that that person's friends would be able to see something that they were sharing or liking. It doesn't guarantee that that was seen by 60,000 people. In fact, I'll tell you, 60,000 people did not see that. What they saw, they saw it on the sidebar where they didn't pay any attention. But it's still a huge jump from just a little bit of smart advertising. Yes? How does that correlate with how much money they make? Uh, well, it's an interesting question because 
most advertising campaigns are not correlated directly to a return directly. You know, this was a campaign specifically to attract more people for growing play. And so this wasn't promoting a specific event now, we're doing a spring sale, which is promoting we just did on MailChimp and we're about to do it on Facebook as well. Uh, those will so those campaigns will have direct return metrics. So this campaign was simply to get to the thresholds at which they could then promote individual posts. So now for example, instead of having to do sidebar that says combine bike with your not bicycle connection, you're limited to like hundred characters. Now they can say something like we just got a new 2015 canyon that bikes in, come try it not today, and just promote that post. The interesting thing about that is that on Facebook, once you do that, once you promote an individual post, the more followers you have, the more money you can spend on an ad campaign, the, more, the, the greater number of people you can reach with that spend. So let's say, for example, you have uh, 600 followers. You might be able to promote a single post for $5 and have 500 Ten dollars, you can see somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred people see. But that's all you can do because it's pushing it to your friends. Do you then get to the point where you have a thousand followers? Now your options are five dollars spent, ten dollars spent, fifteen dollars spent, twenty dollars. The twenty dollars spent gets you as far as three thousand. Now you have two thousand people, and you have to spend all the way up to fifty dollars. I don't actually know what happens after that because I'm only on that page that had below two thousand people. The ability to target a specific post or that specific information and reach so many thousands of potential customers more efficiently than putting something in the sidebar is absolutely huge. Down the bottom, uh, I'll show you that I did a post. Chief David? Yes. So when you took it over, they had, would you say, 100 and something? 158. And then now, how many friends? They have 1,250 as of like, yesterday. Okay. And that is from me taking it over probably two months ago, I think, or three months ago. I forgot when I started doing the social media. Um, the bottom, the bottom little bit here uh, is one of those targeted ad campaigns. I think we spent twenty dollars in one of our posts. We we'll see by eleven thousand seven hundred thirty-nine people. This is the power of likes that we find. If you like my page and I promote a post, my post is going to show up in your feed. First. That's where it goes first. The people who like me are going to see that show up. Where it's seen after that has to do with those people, the influence with those people, and so if the friends are connected to each other. This is the whole key of what we're talking about. If those friends are connected to each other, when I promote the post, or when I write something that Facebook deems through its various technologies, it might be interesting to somebody else. When I do that, it shows up first with my friends, and then it shows up with those people who have similar interests to me. So if my business and Maria Luisa Boutique, for example, have similar friends, if I post something about something going on in Gypsy, her customers are going to see that before anybody outside of that network sees it. That's important for a couple of reasons. The people who know you already and want to come in are an easy customer. They already know your product, they know the quality of your product, now they know something special is going on. But the more people that are connected to each other, the more that that then has, starts to have a viral reach to each other. So if you have people who are connected, if all of our sites are connected to each other, if we all cross promote each other, when we talk about what's going on in each other, and if we're advertising or not, and I do recommend people spend the size of money to advertise, we'll talk about that in a little bit, um, that the net effect is that more people who share similar likes and similar pages are going to end up seeing your information. And the village that is so small, that's key. Um, just take a step back. Yep. You're talking about uh, expanding the universe of people you can reach when you advertise that. Uh, there are Likes, yeah. there are friends. Um, can you tell me? Yeah. So, in a business page, Facebook has changed its terminology over time. So, friends are people who want to see each other's information. So, Dave and I are friends. When Dave posts something, Dave and I uh, see each other's information. Probably. Facebook has determined that I have no interest in seeing my wife's posts about her or my son. I don't know why. But she will constantly say to me, did you see the picture that I posted of me and Henry today? And I say, nope. But I did find out that the Gap has got a sale on socks. So that's pretty awesome. The way Facebook figures out who is connected to each other is through friends. And so the more friends who are connected to each other, the more likely that if Alan posts something and I comment on it, then Foster's going to end up seeing it as well because he's going to see it posted because I have posted that's in the industry. Business, businesses have likes. And they didn't always have likes, but now the terminology is like it. So when you like a business's page, 
you then original. This the original idea, that stuff would start to show up in the industry as well. And it would show up like the people who you have friends. Now, when you do likes, the stuff may or may not show up in the stream, depending on whether it's promoted or not, but it is more likely to, to show up based on the secret sauce that is Facebook's um, Facebook system for figuring out what they call the social graph. The social graph is basically the same thing that Google did to figure out how to rank search results. But they don't really ever explain to anybody that's tweeting all the time. Facebook is the same. So if your business, so if I like uh, Nyack News Reviews, and I post something, that means that Dave is more likely to see something that I have posted because we both like each other's pictures. Well, that is critical for me because even if I forget to tell Dave what I'm doing to post on his news media, he's more likely to see this feed. If Dave sees it and posts it in his feed, and my friends and family like his page, they are more likely to see what's going on. So there's a huge sphere of influence that happens. And that happens because these people who have common interests probably want the same information. Everybody probably wants to know where is a good place to get an off. Everybody probably wants to know if gas is 50% cheaper someplace than somewhere else. You know, that's the kind of information we all share in common. When somebody posts something about the Tappan Zee Bridge, and everyone knows that suddenly you've got like 5,000 comments on the Tappan Zee Bridge, as people start to comment on them, like it, it's spreading into the networks of friends of friends of friends, and so it takes on a slow down. So the, the whole goal of the why to collaborate, the whole takeaway, is that we want to generate a snowball effect in the building and for the peripheral residences and villages and businesses that serve the village by making sure that we find a way to essentially both game the system and use the system effectively. It's better for the whole brand of mine. The more people are coming to the brand of mine, the more people who are likely to have that sort of to have the come by and see my store or see your store or see your your thing. So that's, that's why we're doing this. So the next thing that yeah, we want to talk about then, and then we're going to break it down into a conversation, is how to collaborate. And we all know that sharing is caring. So here are some tips about this. Social media works best for a transparent organization. Foster and I actually debated this a little bit last time, what to call this. When Gypsy decided to open, we decided that one of the things we wanted to do was talk about what we were doing in Warts and All was really important for us as a small business to say, I'm sorry, customers, I fucked up today. I'm going to make it up to you if I did. Sorry for that NS, NSFW there. Um, it was really important that if we improved something, to not say, this wasn't, you know, this was good, and now it's better. Not to just call it the brand new, you know, Carmel Macchiato or something. Like, our goal was to, as we share the user experience, to talk about why. Now there's two reasons for this. One is that I have, before this, I worked with Apple for a number of years. And if anyone's ever worked or around an Apple product with a bit of information, they'll know they're remarkably tight lipped And so as somebody who ran a business trying to disseminate information that was coming from the most opaque business in technology, I found it incredibly difficult. But the other thing is that our village is a really small space. If I make a good product, people are going to tell somebody else that I make a good product. If I make a bad product, people are going to tell someone else that I make a bad product. And so when I know that I make a bad product or make a bad decision, I want to tell people about that. But there's a second reason for that, and this is more selfish reason for that. If you listen to, uh, they don't think they hurt me, they're a <laughs> um, If you ever listen to Radio Lab, there's a particularly nice episode, I think it's called The Game. They talk about uh, the idea of the underdog. And so they talk about one guy who was in, uh, I forget if it was football or baseball season, he, his team was out. And so he didn't have anyone particular to root for. So he watched the game and he decided he would root for whoever was losing. Well, he realized that throughout the course of the game, he would keep swapping who he was rooting for. He always felt great rooting for the person who was losing. And so they started to investigate that. So they've done uh, studies where they've taken people. They first showed them two things competing, or two teams. And they said, this team is the regional champ. And this team is the, you know, the bad news bear. Which one do you support? 98% of people support the bad news bears. So then they abstracted them. They said, this person is a regional artist who is well known and whose pieces hang in galleries. And this person is an outsider artist who hasn't been able to break into the market, whose art really well. They like the outside artist. Then they abstracted it a step further, all the way down to the point where they took a circle 
and a flat plane, and a circle, and an inclined plane. And 98% of the people supported the circle and the inclined plane. So there's two reasons why Gypsy Donut is a transparent business. There's one, I think it's good for us as a business, and it's good for the environment, it's good for the community to be transparent about what we're doing, because we try very, very, very hard to do things that help the community. But the other reason for that is because people are putting the money. So you will not see Starbucks posting on Twitter, hey guys, today I made a really bad cup of coffee, a free cup of coffee to whoever comes in tomorrow. Now there may be somebody on social media to reply to that person tweeting about that, but the company is not necessarily saying, this is what we were doing great yesterday, and now we're going to do better. There's always a new and improved, but they never say that it's new and improved because it was older and not as good. So for a business to talk about the fact that you're not necessarily uh, perfect is both good for you as a business on social media and good for you as a business in the term of getting people to compete against for you against things like the Palisade Center, against things like Starbucks, against things like Stop and Shop, against things like McDonald's. It's good for business. My businesses are the underdogs, as we just talked about. Uh, some tips in social media, you want to share experiences, both good and bad experiences. Good things happen to you, people come in, they have a really great day, employees leave, and you really miss them, they were the favorite barista among people. I'm sorry to see them go, we're going to work really hard to get everybody else to be as friendly and nice as that person. You want to share experiences, you want to genuinely share experiences, or you want to be so really, 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 really good at artificially sharing genuine experiences, but it's going to be seen through because once you try and put lipstick on a pig, you're going to end up with the, you know, the failing campaign. <laughs> commend your friends, but you want to commend your competitors' achievements too. I don't just mean competitors in terms of you know the people across the street selling coffee for me. Anybody else in the village of Nyack who might take away a sale or two from me is a competitor. So if Bossy Frog does something really great, they do a show in order to benefit somebody, I want to talk about it. If Art Cafe wins an award in a barista competition, I'm going to talk about it. If Maria Luisa does something really great, like doing a thing to ban bags, I'm going to talk about that. If the guys at Luminous do something really great, I'm going to talk about it. It's going to raise the awareness of the entire thing. Now, I understand that a lot of people here are representing organizations and support organizations. The question is, like, how exactly does this correlate to the, the trying to get customers in? And remember, as an organization, your goal is exactly the same as a business. You're trying to take a limited resource from people and do something with that resource that someone else wants to do something. So it's the same thing. So for example, the, uh, the NIAC needs a skate park which I work with. Um, you know, I've been in the village for all of my life. I've watched efforts for NIAC to get a skate park come and fizzle several times. Um, when it started to get in earnest, we really got behind it because we realized that our demographic, young people, families, people from out of the area, are exactly that same demographic. So part of it is I want to improve NIAC. I want something really genuine to happen in NIAC. Part of it is that I really want an organization that needs a skate park to do really well because the worst thing to happen for our village is for something like a great idea to start to happen and then just die off. That's, that's even worse than the idea of not having happened in the first place. It makes the place look not sustainable. The third reason why is because it made chips look really, really, really good. And I don't mean that I don't want to be really good, but I really, as a business, I have to make decisions that help my bottom line. Sometimes that's giving away massive amounts of product. Sometimes that's charging for massive amounts of product. But as an organization, a dollar that goes to a swing, or a dollar that goes towards a skate park, or a dollar that goes somewhere, is a competitive. But it's also not a competitive. And that's, that's the core of organization. You want to both include your customer in the conversation. Some people just hate being on social media. Some people love when you do a post about them. We have a lot of cyclists who come to people on teams. We sponsor two teams now. Every time they come in, we post that they're there. They love being part of the conversation. They really share the information. If you are a clothing store, it might not be a good idea to share pictures of your customers trying on clothing, because most people are really a little bit touchy about that. But if somebody comes in and compliments you on something, you might want to ask if you can take their picture with that product that they like so much and share. Awesome thing to share awesome things that your customers might like to see that if it's a cat video. Today, one of my employees posted a uh, funny or die video of uh, uh, coffee snobs, uh, and it is a hilarious look at the world of coffee snobbery. 
and I'm part of the world of commerce now. Really. And so part of it is making fun of me, but my customers, I think, would appreciate the, you know, that me taking the lead for myself. And sometimes I just post a nice picture of something that happened. In Today, also at Bound Guards, they got in uh, mini ice cream cones that are this big, and came over and they gave my son an ice cream cone. I was six two, and they clearly don't, the waiter did not have kids because he handed my kids, and I don't know if he's allowed to have this or not, but here we go. Okay, but it was a really nice gesture. So my son had a 12 minute nap today, and my wife was texting me saying that I really need to sleep. Um, but uh, sometimes it's just nice to post something like a kid on a swing, you know, something that makes people feel good. So here's our pipeline, and this is a little bit of the kind of information that I share with people. I do, this is not a hard sell, I do do social media consulting, it's not mine here tonight, but I do do this. But this, this is one of the things that I talk about with people. Our pipeline will change from month to month based on what tool offers what function. So currently we are using Instagram as our hub for most of what we do. Uh, we are also using our blog as a hub for longer form pieces because the blog uh, has the ability to push to Facebook. Uh, except for the fact that you can't promote a post on Facebook that originated on the WordPress blog. If it was auto-posted, you can only promote it if you copy the, the URL and paste it into Facebook right now. So we have to, something we're going to pay for to advertise, we have to turn off auto-posting and do it ourselves. But our current hub is Instagram. It connects to all of these social networks. So the first four are baked in. You can share to Twitter, you can share to Flickr, you can share it to Facebook, uh, and Foursquare. You can also share to email. Uh, that's important for a lot of the services that are not currently covered by Instagram. So if you want to post something to your blog, or your blog can take you know, in. If you want to plot, uh, post something and have it go to a mailing list, you can do it. For each of your posts, you can turn on and off which of these services. And so in Instagram, I tend to do a lot more pictures of just nice things going on around the village of Nyack and not push those pictures to my Facebook page. But that is that is the basis of our platform. Now, if you're managing more than one social media campaign, Instagram is the most awkward and annoying tool to use because you have to switch accounts, log in, log out. It's really personal and painful, and they'll take care of that at some point. So that is our pipeline. So here's one thing we the uh, this is so uh, friends of our family have a really sick child. I don't want to talk about this too much. One of the things that I would love to come out of this is to help this family raise money. So we started a Facebook group to talk about this big conversation, not specifically about this conversation. But one of the first things I did after Gypsy gave some money to this to this family, right after we did this, we posted it on the Balsy Frog, gave away uh, CDs to first people who donated some money on it. I would really love to knock this out of the park and make this uh, something that we, as a group of businesses, can get funded. I, and again, as a business owner, there's two reasons. One is because uh, uh, the has got a life-threatening disease that actually his old brother got out of. Uh, they're currently treating him with chemo. He actually went home. Now I'm just waiting a bone marrow transplant, it's the a bone marrow donor. That's an incredibly costly and painful operation. They're trying to raise fifteen thousand dollars because the family's gonna to have to cover their medical costs, they're not working, they have to take care of the five year old son. Um, so we would really would really like to do this from the, the humanitarian aspects of this and just to show the power of us in the community. The other aspect of this is that in all forms of media, at some point traditional media, looks for the reason why they should talk about the story of Nyack working together as a vote. And what I want to happen is to have the success story of helping somebody out be the first one. Not somebody had a banner month in selling cups of coffee, but somebody helped somebody get that. So that's my personal plea about that. Now we're going to stop having me talk. Uh, this is the website address at the bottom where we are currently, as a, it's currently an open group, I will probably leave it open until we get the majority of my businesses in it, and I'm gonna close it because the last thing I want is to turn into the villages of my ex group page, which is essentially people complaining about the bridge, and then complaining about the people complaining about the bridge, and then people like me just having fun complaining about the people complaining about the bridge. So, uh, next we're gonna talk, and there's no more slides, but I'm gonna turn it off, but here's the website address, facebook.com forward slash groups, Forward slash NIAC. And if someone can check, I actually think it's NIAC collaborates the plural. 
and the guy who put a typo in there. But since I'm running the slideshow, I can't actually do it. No, it's singular. It's singular. Okay, thanks. So now I have it. So let's talk for a second. I want to do that very quickly, though. Let's go around the room, but I don't want you to do like a minute. I'm Blom from Blom. So let's start in the corner there. Yeah, Heller. There's just a little nice. White with a yellow knife right now. Hot for Hot for Hot for Hot for Hot for Hot for Hot I'm Joseph Kaiser, full hats, but I'm here with BCSK Tiffany Carr, playing for the Brooklyn Center. Jeffrey Bossenbrock. Foster Bass, I'm a developer. I do social media work. I uh, manage social media pages ranging from 100 fans to 725,000. Teresa Bergen, um, Amazing Grace Service. Sally Clark, uh, sorry, Sally Clark, uh, Knife Playground Project. That's it. Bastia, Elements Bob, and Mom New York. Mary Ann Olive, uh, Here's Mary Ann, Olives, and Sauerkraut. I love that you have to comment. Sally, it's doing well. Nice. So Sally, what you say you can get because I'm oh. saying that you are. Oh, Sally Clark at Night Playground Project. Carol Perry at the Hopper House. Jim Hirschberger, Historical Society. Excellent. Brian Jennings, Nyack Library. Don Pass, Maria Richard Dysinger, I've lived in the village 21 years now. Global marketing and social marketing consultant for many of the brands and Coca Cola and big brands like that. So that's kind of interesting. Tracy Costic Anders, Vincent's Ear, and Nyack Art Collective. Melody Partrick, the Village Recreation Director. I'm Derek Foster. I have my own business. I'm a web developer, also trustee of the Village, and host of the Village of Nyack. Facebook page, which is not the one where everybody should be. The real one. <laughs> um, Barbara Valenti, Project and the Disability Business Group. Rebecca Lazaroff, uh, Bell and Beans or Baby Clothes. Kim Cross, Night Center. Harry Janadi, Kershawa Gallery, 20 years across the street. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 Uh, Sarah Anderson from Magnus Skate Park. Jim Woods from Nursery School of Science. Uh, Tyrone Leto from Morris Kitchen. Constantine and John Omarosh from Eagle Park Broadway Restaurant. I'm Jamie Gabriela from Fine Artists and Agents. Marcel Zane from Magnus Street Health and Jacket. Uh, Brian Baker from Fox Street. Susan Strange and Bill Fox I am all of those things except the library, which means the only skill part of the, the real skill part, the very part I don't have any right now. Candace Robbins, uh, Candace Robbins Organic Beauty. I'm Greg, <clears throat> Greg Rosner, the uh, father. Joy, Joy, the <laughs> so it's very no, forgive me. Just getting over a cold. Uh, my name is Greg Rosner, and I'm the father of a middle school entrepreneur that wants to open the Nyack Skate Shop in Nyack. Nice. I'm Shauna Hanke, local artist. Um, I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> Beverly Gopin, owner of Gallery of Metal and Stone by Jewelry and Lynn Haviland, Apple. Associates uh, branding firm. Uh, Dave Zornow, media research consultant and application developer and publisher of Nike Music News. Joanne Zornow, and I work in marketing communications. And, and, <clears throat> and I'm Alan Furstenberg. I am a uh, programmer, developer uh, for Objective Consulting. So I know everybody here who I know personally. I know either through 
through Nurses School, the NIAX, or my shop. And everybody who I did know personally, I know because I know the brands that are mine. So I actually have like a 97% recognition rate for the things that are going on. The only ones I don't know are the ones that are consultants who may not have a story. So let's talk about how to collaborate. And this is, if you have any questions, let's talk about it now, give any suggestions. My first place for us to collaborate is to start to use the Facebook group to start to point out things that each of us are doing that we might want the other ones to pick up on. And so I think that that is the place to say something like, our business just won an award, or, uh, or, or our organization just got the green light from the trustees to do something, or we just got a major grant to put in air conditioning. Uh, these kind of things are what I think that you know, site would be really best used. The problem again with Facebook is that if we start overcrowding with things like, today I made a really great stone, it really gets uh, unuseful really quickly. So what I'd like to use that page for my recommendation of how to use that site would be to use it as a way to point out the achievements of either ourselves or the things that other people that we do in the community have done. Uh, a couple of things recently that came up were brought to my attention by local businesses congratulating other local businesses. So that would be my suggestion about how to use that. My main suggestion for how to get uh, more things happening more quickly is for us to develop a, a list of the Facebook pages of each of the businesses in my app, whether they're here tonight or not. You know, a lot of people that just couldn't attend, and a lot I didn't get the word out to in time. Um, to put a list of each of the Facebook pages of uh, every business in NIAC that has a Facebook page and to like them. So that we all like everybody's page. It does a couple of things. The very first thing it does is when a new person goes and looks at one of our brands, they see that the page is more nice. There's more uh, Broadway, for example. Um, you guys do the great after we start, but we haven't just been open very recently. Um, but if you guys ended up with 50, 60 more likes in a matter of a couple of hours, um, so that, that is my suggestion is that we go and like everything in the app. My next suggestion is that we keep our eyes open as we are residents of the village, customers of the village, people of the village. Because in social media, there's everybody knows that there's somebody behind social media. Everybody knows that there's a person who's actually typing the picture. And so the, the great thing about that is that it gives you the experience, the ability to share that experience with the person part of yourself. I was in the library today, look at the view out the window. I was in our cafe today, this is the library. So I would encourage everybody, once you start, uh, once you start collaborating on liking everybody's business, to take the time to not only in your social media point out what other people do, but we'll also make a list of people's uh, Twitter and Instagram accounts. It'd be real good if we could, when we write something about a business on social media, use the correct social media tags over the time. Now, I forgot to write down the Gypsy Donut tag, um, but it's at Gypsy. Oh, right. So, if you guys, for example, took a picture of a donut that you liked and on Instagram to at Gypsy Donut on Instagram, you would immediately allow us to see it and then comment back to you and our fans to see you posting stuff. Uh, also, to use the hashtags for each of uh, hashtags for things like NIAC, and I would recommend that we come up with a good use of commonly used hashtags for NIAC businesses. You know, NIAC clothing, for example, or uh, NIAC floors. Um, we can talk about that uh, in social media, or anybody who's doing the marketing and the brand development and social media development could suggest their thoughts about that. But developing a list of hashtags that would be easy to pick from uh, that would help people in NIAC find goods and services would be really, really helpful to all of us. The next thing that I would suggest that we do is that we regularly, uh, and not necessarily like the first Tuesday of every month, but every occasionally, all sit down in a group and talk about our experiences with social media, which ones we're liking, which ones we're not liking, what new businesses we just went to, and if there's anything coming up like uh, the collaborative process of trying to help the, you know, the skate park and playground, I think things like that, things that are improving the village at large, I think we should all be really focused. It helps our businesses, it helps them. So especially as things come up like, uh, you know, I use a skate park and pick the jab and we should all try to make a concerted effort to coordinate. So on the same day, or the same days, we're all talking about the same thing. So visitors to all of us say that it's something that we all care about. And so we should try and target what we talk about and when we talk about. 
Um, that is pretty much my suggestions and my part of the conversation. If anyone has questions or comments, Barbara. Quick question. So when you post something on Facebook and it's got hashtags, mm -hmm. that means that someone posted it from a general spot and it went? Yes. Because yes. the hashtags really don't do anything don't do for anything. Facebook. They're more for Twitter and other things. Now, what we do sometimes on Instagram, uh, if I'm if I'm taking the time, because you know, as a small business owner, I'm not always doing best practices. But if I take the time, what I will do on Instagram is I will post the Instagram photo with nothing but the caption first, because on Instagram, it doesn't matter where you end up putting the hashtag in the stream of it, people can find it. So once you post that, the picture then goes to Facebook and goes to Twitter and goes to Flickr and goes to Instagram. Once I've done that, I will then go back and hashtag Nyack, hashtag food board, and hashtag donuts, you know, whatever. So if you're thinking about it, the best practice is post the picture of the hashtags because it's just confusing the people in person. My guess, my guess, however. I'd also point out that as with everything on Facebook, that's changing. Facebook is increasingly becoming savvy, realizing that everyone else in the cosmos is using hashtags, so they're starting to adopt it as well now. Um, some people have it working for them, some people don't. So you're, you're going to see that changing over time. But you can search hashtags in Instagram. So if people, yeah, can, you can yeah. search hashtags yes. in Instagram. Right. But if it's, if it's, are you saying like don't put the hashtags in, it, in I'm the saying description? When you first post a picture on Instagram, yeah. you have a choice to push it to whichever media you want, you know, right. Facebook or whatever. Yeah. Post it. What I do is I post that. Yeah. And then once I post that in the comment line, I'll put all the hashtags. So it's those still searchable. Oh, okay. That's but then your Facebook users don't have it. But as I was talking about, once on Facebook, they will have the ability to search for hashtags on Facebook. Maybe just you might as well have done. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm curious to hear on a separate subject on your Kickstarter, like a one-minute summary of the Kickstarter experience and whether the money came local or national. That's a great question. So. Um, Gypsy Donut was uh, one of the few businesses to actually use Kickstarter, I think, to, to fund a brick and mortar business. We raised $16,000 in Kickstarter in 30 days. Um, it was actually a big chunk of what we anticipated our opening, opening cost would be, but with any brick and mortar store, the, the opening cost would be much, much greater than that. But it was really heartening uh, for us. I would say that 80% of the Kickstarter funding came locally. Of that 80% that came locally, I would say probably 20 to 30% were people that I had no familiarity with whatsoever. Uh, about 10% came from my colleagues in other businesses that I did. And then Kickstarter, because we were a brick and mortar store doing this, uh, put us on their blog. And so we had about 10% of our revenue came from people who just liked us on Kickstarter, were backing other projects, and then came back and, and, and did us. Um, of all the stuff that I do that I charge, I talk about Kickstarter for free. So if anyone wants to do anything in Kickstarter and wants to get feedback on that, come and have a cup of coffee with me and I'll tell you all my experiences on that because I think it's a really wonderful way to get things to get things done. So just talk a little. We have one little plug in for that need our help, just sort of on the same note. Um, GoFundMe is also, I've spoken to the managers at GoFundMe to try to see how we can raise you know, our exposure. And GoFundMe, is, the algorithm is very clear. It's percentage of goal raised, which is $15,000 in less than four days, I think it is now, or over $8,000. So it's a percentage. So even if people give $5, I'm appealing, as you can tell. Even if people give $5, it's percentage of fund raised. It's how many people have seen this and it's um, the amount of time that it's done. In. So their algorithm is so clear, which made a lot of sense. And if we do increase the exposure and increase the funds raised, it will be featured on the GoFundMe homepage, which thousands and thousands of people. So if we all go home and go to our individual business pages, this, you, you just say, we picked in five bucks to help this local family, which is really good about. So is there a separate Facebook page for that or just the GoFundMe? There is not a separate Facebook page okay. that I know of, but Maybe. it is. But it is posted in the in our group. In and I So just from sort of a concrete point of view, because I'm sure people will start breaking up and going places. Um, uh, 
is there some sort of format that people are interested in pursuing this, or are people just sort of, you know, because I, I, I can see there's a lot of different skill levels here. People who are on Facebook, people who aren't, people who know who hashtag, what hashtag even are, people who don't. So, you know, it, it would be possible to find out from everybody in the room whether or not you'd be willing or able to participate in this collaborative community process in terms of sharing and liking and being a part of promoting each other to promote NIA. So who here would like to, to do more basics and just find out more about hashtags, add some rules, social media, play a short So it's a good, good amount of that. So let's, are, all, are any of you unable to really like the Facebook group and, and make comments? So let's, let's use that to pick a time to, to do some basic. What is social media and how do you use social media? Let's do that for the people who want to do this. Yes. I think the one thing I found really helpful in, in, in response to this is also spending a lot of time on social media. I mean, it can seem like it's a waste of time, but you, you see what gets traction, you see what people are reading, um, you see what people are interested in just by being there. So if you're not sure about it, I, I recommend spending a lot of time just observing, trying things out, posting, and see what gets a response, and then you'll be able to begin to learn how it works also experientially. Can I, can I follow on that? Is one of the things, um, I think you kind of touched on it, what I'm particularly excited to do, took the efforts together, is that there's a... Um, there are a couple different IACs. There were people, you know, I've lived here about seven years, and when I say that the people, some people go, I've been here a while, and some people go, you're just me. My family's been here since the time. And there's also a bifurcation in the use of media here as well. So I think you're going to slide up, you're referring to uh, print publications about, you know, not complete in the um, I um, uh, equal parts uh, active in social media and actively thinking of wasting my time, you know. There, there's there's some level that you get that we look at and say, are these my real customers? Mm -hmm. um, especially when you deal with products like Twitter, you could go, you know, there are just so many things out there that don't seem to make sense. But, but to, to Jeff's point, I think uh, there's a lot to be said for dabbling in this. Um, we don't know if 10 years from now that uh, uh, there will be a Twitter or what Facebook may evolve into. But from the standpoint of if you have a business or a group or you even want to keep up with your grandchildren, Lots of different contexts. Uh, there's something to be said for uh, dangling your toes in the water, and you have to put in enough time and have to have enough of an open mind to not think that everything's going to work. Um, all of these platforms are evolving. All of these people who make investments, they're making up as they go along, they're adjusting, they're changing. Um, and we have to do that as well. Um, maybe you can have some comments about one the right point to stop this so you're not addicted to using up too much time i have not gotten that from <laughs> because i know that there, there's some therapists we should because i know that the majority of customers who come into my business who tell me how they found me found me through social media so i have not found the break-even point at which i'm boarding too much time i have found that if i'm at the park and pushing my son on the swing i should probably not be tweeting or facebooking or instagramming but I find that I often am. Is that going to pay for his college? I hope so. Um, but let me ask Mordekin's point before we go on. Who is interested in meeting again to hash out more concrete things that we can do inside just doing this? Um, okay, which is great. Which means what I'll do is I'll use two methods to disseminate information. I'll use the original event because I can still comment to everybody who said yes, no, or maybe to the event. So I'll use the original event to push out when we are going to meet again. But I'll also use our group to try to figure out when we're going to meet again. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll use a space. Maybe we'll do something like uh, go to one of the restaurants that would be here and, and sit and have drinks or something to talk about, or maybe we'll come back here. We'll find something else. We'll come up with some concrete steps. Between then and now, my biggest takeaway is let's try and be just creative. If you're, if you're eating a bowl for meal and you're having a really good experience, take a picture of it and try posting it on your business's page. The worst that happens is somebody doesn't like that particular post. Um, if, yeah. Just your original idea of getting a list of businesses yeah. that are represented here or not, yes. I, that's great to see if you start off. Yes. Well, a group, the group, the groups allow you to do notes, and so what we can do is we can do a note on the, you know, the Facebook group. Right. I haven't actually used a Facebook group note in a long time, so if it turns out that it's not a great 
and then we just do the action or something like that. Yeah, so we should have work. So I'll go, I'll go play with it and see what, what it is. I'll start something and I'll maybe I'll say, please add it and kind of know what you're talking about. Well, I'll try and separate it in between uh, first making businesses and organizations, and then as we evolve, we can make it fit into some more specifically, you know, restaurants, cafes, whatever. Um, so for physically, for, for all of us doing that liking, we'll start a list as soon as, you know, probably I get home tonight. We'll start reading. Um, in terms of sharing information with each other, what I would just ask everyone to do is we can make either a separate section on that same list, you know, where we did the businesses, Facebook page, their Twitter name is this, their Instagram name is this, you know, so what I'd ask is for you guys to we'll do this sort of wiki style, put your own information down first, and then if you see somebody who's sharing a business who wasn't here and the information's not right, try and keep that in here. Um, yes, did you have a question? Yeah, there's, okay. Anybody have some questions? I don't want to keep people too long because I know people have a lot of things to do in like the real physical world. Okay, so if we can if we can please like my two takeaways, let's all go home and like the like, businesses that we can find and start sharing information about that. And if we can really quickly just share a little bit of money with the family that has been really critical like, like, where, where are we finding that list? So that list I will go home and I will I will check and see how collaborative it is. I think that Facebook groups might just let you post a list as opposed to share a list. Um, well, in groups, can does yeah. groups do docs, right? You can have a doc. Yeah. Like, I don't. I will probably just do a Google Doc because everybody has access to Google. We can all put it up in the doc. Hey, Alan, the Google Plus guy, would you like to make a Google Doc? You want me? I'll make a Google Doc. Sure. Okay. Alan will go home tonight and make a Google Doc document and then post that to the social group, and we can all contribute to that. And then once in a while, we figure out how we want to do that. If we want to just post that somewhere, so everybody can come to it, or what that is. David, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. One last collaboration request, which is that I have a stress fracture, uh, and should not be standing. So if everybody could help us put the chairs away, because the space is used as much as space next, uh, that would be really great. Thank you very much, everybody. We really appreciate it.